Now, more than ever, it's important you get good value for your money. Take this pair of jeans, for example. I've worn these for the past 2,000 YouTube videos, but I keep them because they still do their vital job of covering my private parts. And the MGHS does the same thing, but in the car world. It is a rival for the Volkswagen Tiguan in terms of size and space and SUV-ness, but it undercuts the Volkswagen by eight thousand pounds so in this video we're going to find out if you're getting eight thousand pounds less car is it worth it should you buy one what's the takeaway the chinese takeaway <laughs> <sighs> Now, obviously, we need to talk about the price because it's a huge part of the HS's appeal because it is a bit of a billy bargain. There are two versions. There's an SE model for £23,500 or this trophy model for £26,000. And whichever one you pick, you're getting a lot of kit for your money. Even the entry-level model gets sat-nav, aircon, a reversing camera, LED headlights. The trophy model adds heated seats and dual-zone climate control. So you're getting loads of stuff for your money you're also getting what i think is one of the more handsome mgs we've seen in recent years this is the 2023 facelift it's a big chrome whale going through the sea hoovering up plankton not me i'm in peterborough in the cold now that price means this undercuts all of its rivals with the possible exception of the Citroen C5 Aircross. And this is bigger than that. It's 4.6 meters long, which makes it a direct rival for the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Kia Sportage. However, the Kia Sportage might have a seven year warranty, but so does this. And that's why these MGs hold their money reasonably well. Admittedly, this has only got an 80,000 mile warranty as opposed to the Kia's 100,000 mile warranty, but it is transferable. It's pretty decent. Slightly less impressive is the 463 litre boot you get in the MGHS. It's a bit below the class average and you lose another 15 litres if you get the plug-in hybrid version. And even in this petrol one, you don't get much in the way of underfloor storage. So yeah, it's not bad, it's just not great. You might be thinking this is an affordable Chinese SUV, but the cabin doesn't give off that vibe. I'm actually really surprised how nice it is in here, especially in this trophy model. You've got these kind of part lever, part suede seats you've got leather across the dashboard it's a bit plasticky in places when you look around but by and large the things you touch feel quite nice now we have to talk about the steering wheel because it's got the most ridiculous button in any car it has a button called super sport which puts you into a super sport driving mode i've got a 1.5 liter petrol not a 5.2 liter lamborghini v10 but anyway whatever i've got a digital dashboard which shows you all your safety systems working and there are a lot of standard on this car part the mg pilot pack comes with things like active lane keeping assist radar cruise blah 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 loads of stuff it's got a five star year end cap rating as well but yeah the entertainment system is nice and bright and colorful it makes a bit of a naff bong whenever you press anything you've got to plug in for CarPlay and Android Auto, but that's fine because there are two USB sockets right here. The glove box is even a decent size, unlike most French cars. Big door bins as well. This has got a big cubby hole, which is cooled with the air conditioning. And I've got two cup holders. So yeah, there's a lot to like in here. One little criticism of the HS's interior is if you get this trophy model with its heated front seats, you turn them on by pressing a button down here and then pressing an on-screen icon. It's a little bit too fiddly. And I think there's only one level for the heated seats. They're off or on. No middle setting, just to warm your cockles slightly. Back seat space is really, really impressive in the MGHS. Frankly, I've been in more claustrophobic fields. I've got lots of knee room, foot room, and headroom, and it feels nice and wide as well. And the seats are reclined at a nice angle. So as soon as you get in, you kind of want to go to sleep, which is always a good sign in my book. You've got two USB-A's down there for charging your devices. You've got little seat back pockets, like you're on an EasyJet flight, and it just feels really quite comfortable. I think this is as spacious as a Volkswagen Tiguan, that's pretty decent. Right, we're gonna go for a quick drive in the MGHS. And you might expect it to feel cheap to drive, and in some areas it actually does, I'm afraid. The 1.5 litre petrol engine is thirsty. It's 160 horsepower, so it feels pokey. 38 MPG is the official figure, and I've been getting 30 in normal driving. So come in with your eyes open on that front. Now the seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox is also quite jerky around town doing low speed maneuvers it feels like they've not properly done it to be honest it's really jerky when you lift off the accelerator and get back on it but once you're up to speed it's okay and there is a manual gearbox version 
There's also a hybrid version as well, plug-in hybrid. It can do 30 miles on a charge, but that does add a whopping 8,000 pound to the price of this car. But here I am on a very, very bumpy country road, and it's all right. It's not quite as settled as its German rivals, like the Volkswagen Tiguan, but it turns, it grips, and it goes. I would say if you put it into sport mode or super sport mode, it just makes the accelerator outrageously sensitive. It is not a very pleasant car to drive in those modes. It does feel quite brisk, but the engine sounds really, really rorty in a, not a nice way. And when it changes gear, you get a bit of a thump as well. So it's a mixed bag to drive. It's a comfortable cruiser. It's just when you put your foot down, it's noisy. And when you're driving slowly, it's jerky. So there you have it. Let's jump to a conclusion. Now, considering the MG HS is the most affordable mid-size SUV on sale in the UK at the moment, it's pretty impressive. But despite that modern face, there are a few annoying quirks. It can be jerky to drive, the engine is quite thirsty, and the interior in places is a bit plasticky, and the infotainment screen is a little bit fiddly to use, and the boot isn't quite as big as some of its rivals. But it's got lots of backseat passenger space, and once you're up to speed, it's pretty comfortable to drive. But the main thing is, it's so affordable, apart from the insurance, which is actually in a higher group than a Hyundai Tucson. But all around, it's a bit of a bargain SUV, if you can live with those negatives. Now I'm off to go and buy some new jeans. Thank you ever so much for watching. If this has been a helpful video, please hit the thumbs up and give it a like, it really helps us out. Also subscribe to the Motorpoint YouTube channel because we've got plenty of really very good car reviews coming soon. I'll see you next time.